Hello, and welcome to the iTherm Heatsink Design Competition Senior Project Presentation. Our project consisted of a heatsink design submission to an international student competition sponsored by ASME, IEEE, and GE, known as the iTherm Heatsink Design Competition. The 2021 iTherm competition required teams to design an additively manufactured heatsink subject to natural convection in which the heatsink is cooled through only passive effects. The heatsink was required to be contained within the design volume shown here and was subject to a 25 watt input heat rate to the base of the heatsink, which is comparable to the heat generated by a laptop CPU. Our competition submission included a final heatsink design and corresponding analysis of performance, as well as a paper submission detailing our design process. Our submission was then scored based on our heatsink performance, design, and use of additive manufacturing. The competition will score our heatsink with a cost-based figure of merit. The figure of merit depends on the cost of the heatsink and the temperature difference between the base of the heatsink and the atmosphere. This penalizes heat sinks that use a lot of material and don't shed heat well. So our goal was to minimize the heat sink volume and maximize the heat transfer from the heat sink to the atmosphere. The heat sink has two modes of heat transfer, conduction and convection. Convection is governed by Newton's law of cooling, which is displayed on our poster. This gives us three ways to maximize the heat transfer. We can increase the heat transfer coefficient, increase the surface area of the heat sink, or increase the temperature difference between the heat sink and the atmosphere. Some background research showed us that in general, pin-fin heat sinks with a high surface area and a low volume are very effective. We were able to improve on this design by improving the heat transfer coefficient, which is called H in Newton's law of cooling. This coefficient is dependent on the shape of the surface and the velocity of the flow over the surface. We chose to use pin fins with an airfoil cross section to streamline the flow over the pins and to reduce the thickness of the thermal and velocity boundary layers. It was also important for us to increase the temperature difference between the pins and the surrounding air. Because our original design had an inline pin layout as shown in figure four, there were many stagnation points that caused the air to become very hot, which reduced the performance of our heatsink. Our final design used a staggered pin layout with cylindrical cross sections to improve this. It was also important to consider conductive heat transfer, which is heat transfer within the solid. Our pin design, which is shown in figure three, had some points of constriction, so we added a stem to improve conduction to the tip. From our simulations, we found that the center pins were not effective because the air surrounding them was too hot. To remedy this, we removed pins around the center and along the diagonal. This created inflow channels that cooled the center pins and increased their effectiveness while also reducing the volume and increasing our overall figure of merit. Our final design consideration was the manufacturability of the heatsink. Our heatsink will be manufactured using additive manufacturing and therefore it must not have overhangs greater than 45 degrees or complex details smaller than one millimeter. Our final design was based off many design principles previously outlined. We went through multiple design iterations with the intent to improve the previous iteration. Some key iterations that we implemented were round airfoil pins, a stem at the base of the pins, staggering of the pins, as well as implementing air channels within the heatsink. These combined modifications allowed for improved performance and reduced the overall volume of the heatsink. Our final design can be seen in figures six and seven. It can be noted that there is a hole at the base of the heatsink. This hole is where the thermocouple will be attached in order to test our heatsink. Our analysis procedure utilized for testing our heatsink can be outlined below. As a team, we brainstormed many heatsink designs that we thought would work optimally for natural convection. We brought the designs from paper to SolidWorks in order to analyze our ideas and simulation software. We used computational fluid dynamics, also known as CFD, to analyze the heat transfer and fluid flow of our heatsink designs to get a figure of merit. The CFD program solves equations that describe heat transfer and fluid flow. These are called the energy equations and the Navier-Stokes equations, respectively. To solve these equations, the problem was broken up into many smaller 3D blocks called tetrahedrals to make the calculations simpler. The more blocks that are used, the more the computation time increases to solve the problem. For example, our simulation used 2.2 million tetrahedrals to analyze our final heatsink design. 
The model was checked against known results using equations for a simpler case of our heat sink so we, so we could be confident in our simulation. We used a spreadsheet to keep track of the performance of our designs by tracking the heat sink base temperature and base volume, which is how the figure of merit is calculated. We chose the design with the best performance after analyzing over 30 designs. The simulations of our designs can be seen in figures eight, nine, 10, and 11. Figure eight shows a side view of the flow of the air through the heat sink due to rising hot air. Figure nine shows a top-down view of the airflow through the heat sink. Figure 10 shows a top-down view of the te temperature of the heat sink. And figure 11 shows a temperature plot of the air in the final heat sink design from the side. Traditionally, heat sink designs were limited by several manufacturing constraints. However, with the increased use of additive manufacturing, we were given a lot more freedom with respect to different heat sink topologies. Many of the intricate and complex shapes implemented in our heat sink would have been impossible to produce with traditional manufacturing techniques. The airfoil pin fins in our heat sink, for example, have irregular and small cross sections and can only be printed using an additive manufacturing methods. In conclusion, on March 8th, we submitted our final heat sink design to the ITHERM competition. We ensured that our heat sink satisfied all of the design and manufacturing constraints placed forth by the competition guidelines. Our airfoil pin fin design, according to our ANSYS fluent model, had an average base temperature of 429.8 Kelvin. Our figure of merit was 0 0.00268, which allowed us to become semifinalists in the competition. Since we are semifinalists, GE will additively manufacture our heat sink with aluminum and physically test its performance. If our heat sink is among the top performers, we will be placed in the finals and be given the opportunity to present at the ITHERM International Conference. Finally, we would like to thank our advisors, Dr. Rao and Dr. Park, for their guidance and assistance with our senior design project. Here you can see a dynamic view of our final heat sink design in SOLIDWORKS. As we rotate around the side of the heat sink, you can see the pins designed with a stacked 3D airfoil topology and a thicker base to improve conduction from the base of the heat sink. As we move to an aerial view of the heatsink, you can see the X-shaped inflow channels that improved cooling of the central pins to maximize our figure of merit.